Hey guys, Vincent here with another video for Tails Coffee. And today, it's another gear review day. It's the Hario Mugen. So, Hario designed this as a single pour dripper. And myself being a single pour addict, how could I not review this? Let's get into why I think this is a great single pour dripper. So before we get into the video, if you love weekly coffee content, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you want to see my favorite equipment and my favorite coffee beans, check out my website, tailscoffee.com. So let's quickly talk about the design of this dripper. Now, damn, is this a cool looking dripper. It's got this really cool ninja star look to it. And as you can see that there's no grooves on the side, but in reality, this Ninja Star doesn't really do anything for us. It just looks cool. There's maybe a little bit of like water guidance, but eh, I don't think it does anything. But this dripper actually comes in two materials. It has a ceramic version and a plastic version. Now, personally, I don't really like ceramic drippers that much because when I set my grinds and I do my quick little tap at the end of it, uh, the power transfer doesn't work really well through ceramic drippers and I've actually broken a couple servers from it. So I actually opted in for the plastic one myself, which essentially means I bought myself a smaller Chemex that's plastic and a smaller hole or the Mugen. So let's quickly talk about the mechanics of this dripper. Now, because there are no grooves that actually prop up the paper filter a little bit away from the walls, we actually have much less side channeling going on. So for those of you that don't know what side channeling is, it's actually when, you know, it's kind of like when you have like a cloth filter and you're trying to like strain anything. It could be a cheesecloth, it could be like, you'll notice that the water runs on the outside of the cloth and not purely through whatever's inside it. Now, in a normal V60, the coffee flavors or the waters can actually run along the outside of the paper filter, which gets to the bottom much quicker. But because there's none of these grooves that lift it away from the walls, we now have a paper filter that sits perfectly against the walls and all the water and liquid is actually being pushed back into the middle, which causes a higher extraction and a lower and slower flow rate. So now we have a restricted flow rate, which causes more extraction and which leads into a very unique recipe that I'm about to share with you guys. So because of the restricted flow rate, my recipe actually includes a bypass to it. And that's because when you're pouring through this dripper, the coffees will sink faster than the water's flowing out. Now I've talked about it before in one of my extraction videos. If you haven't watched it before, there'll be a link up here or one in the description below. But if you watch that, you'll understand that when the coffees sink, the water passing through it doesn't actually extract a lot of the great flavors. So which means in this dripper, we can actually extract a lot of the great flavors in a very short amount of time because of the restrictive flow rate. So the bypass is going to be about 30% of your liquid. So I'm going to show you guys in a demo right away. I use 15 grams of beans, 225 grams of water, but in there, about 70 grams of water is actually just a bypass. So I'll be doing 155 grams directly into here and the rest of it will be a bypass. And you'll see that towards the middle, towards the end of my pour, that the coffees are already sinking because I'm pouring really slow and the restricted flow rate allows it to extract all the great flavors within that frame time. Let's get right into it. Hey guys, Eric here. We're just gonna do a quick ad break from Vincent's Ugly Face. I just wanted to let everyone know that we're doing a giveaway this week. We're gonna give away the Mugen Dripper that we just reviewed if this video hits 200 likes, all right? So I'm gonna need everyone here to smash that like button and leave a comment asking who's Candice. And one more thing, although we've been reviewing a lot of gear lately, I just wanted to remind everyone that we do sell coffee, okay? We're not giving away that one, but we do sell coffee here. So please visit tailscoffee.com, all right? Tailscoffee.com. All right, back to the video. So here I've got my 15 grams of beans set up. Um, I've got the 91 degree water in here. And let's start the timer as I start the pour. And you'll see, we're gonna look for when the coffees have really sank. We're gonna pour really slowly to get the full effect of this dripper. And as we work our way out, we're just looking to push the grinds 
to the side. For different beans, you'll, it'll take different amounts of wires to press it all down in time. See how the edges are still nice and gentle? So we're now moving outwards. And I'm already gonna do the finish. So I, I've put about 160 in here this time, but once we stir, I can already feel it just settling. And all just forcing it all the way back into the middle. So we're gonna let that drain and we're gonna watch the timer very carefully because it actually takes quite a bit of time to drain. Before we go into talking about the flavors, let's just quickly look at the grinds and the shape of the grinds, okay? Uh, we've got ourselves a beautiful dome as always. Oh, let me get the focus in, right there. And we're gonna have quite a pasty finish. And that's because this dripper forces all the water back into the middle. And so you're gonna get a much pastier one, even though you use much less water and there's much less agitation overall. So I give it a quick stir as I always do, which is like a normal one. But my normal brews don't finish this pasty. And this is purely because all the waters are being forced back in to pull a stronger cup of coffee. And we finished at the 150 mark. If you guys take a quick look over here, it finished at the 150 mark. And this is how I know we have a really well extracted coffee. Good timing. Uh, it's not too pasty. It's still a little bit granular, but nice and sweet. So we're back on the side. We didn't add the bypass in earlier because, you know, let's just add it now. So I have always pre-weighed my, my water. This was 225 grams of water in here. So the remainder, which was like the 65 grams or whatever, went straight into here as a bypass. And I've got myself my favorite coffee cups to drink with, and that's the origami cups. The nice little spot of the, or the, the shape of it is just my favorite. Uh, it's a smaller size today because we have a smaller brew. And here we are. Wow. Ah, it's a full cup of coffee. So right off the bat, I really taste the sweetness. It feels more gentle than with a normal V60. Maybe it's because we're doing a bypass, but I'm not missing any of the flavors at all. I personally think this is a better version of the V60, though it is a little bit harder to use, but that is strictly for the single pour. So the dripper is really good for brewing a very strong early to kind of middle part of the brew, which is why we have a, a heavy extraction in the beginning. That's due to the restricted flow rates. Now keeping that in mind, when I pour really slow, even with a smaller dosage like this one, my first drip comes out pretty late too. On a smaller dosage, you normally have a earlier and quicker first drip because there's less volume of beans that the water is gonna be passing through. But with the 15 grams that I used today, it probably took at least 15 to 20 seconds before the first drip even came out. And with only 160 grams of water, this dripper took a minute 50 for everything to drip out, which is kind of insane. So that means we have a very, very strong flavor being extracted with very little water. So let's go over some of the pros and cons of this dripper. As you can see, this damn good looking dripper deserves to be on any countertop. But aside from the luck, with the restrictive flow rates, as you can see, you can brew a very strong cup of coffee with very little water. And on top of that, you can make it in smaller dosages. Now I can actually brew with 15 grams of water or beans and still have a very late first drip, which allows me to have a very tasty but smaller cup of coffee. But this also leads me to in some of the cons because of the restricted flow rates. And that is because it could be a little bit difficult for beginners to handle if you don't understand how to control your water. Now, if you pour too much water through there and the coffee beans sink too quickly, then you're gonna have an over-extracted and maybe a little bit bitter of a coffee. And that's because it's gonna be extracting for a little bit longer than you would like. Now, with the technique I used and showed you guys, you can mitigate it with the bypass, but it still takes a little bit of understanding. So I would recommend it to people that have a little bit of understanding or practice with a V60 
and I do think it is more of an intermediate level kind of a brewer. I hope you guys learned how I like to use the Mugen Dripper and if this dripper is suitable for you. If you guys like this video, please leave a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to our channel and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.